Hello, welcome to this second video on triple integrals in cylindrical coordinates. It's part of a bigger series just about triple integrals in general. And so my name is, my name is Nakaya Rimmer and I'm here to help you through this, this multivariable calculus journey. Let's take a look at two examples in this video. First up, we have this example labeled example five. We're asked to find the volume that's bounded below by the paraboloid, 2x squared plus 2y squared equals z, and then bounded above by the plane z equals 2. Okay, so we have our plane, two units off the xy plane, parallel to the xy plane, that's called z equals 2. And then we have our paraboloid, which is given as 2x squared plus 2y squared, but I want you to think about factoring out the 2. And so we would want to do z first, where we slice vertically and we move that back and forward, left and right. There's a defined upper z and lower z for sure. The upper z is the plane, the lower z is the paraboloid. z lives in between these two. But when we look at the shadow in the xy plane, when we project this onto the xy plane, we're going to get a circle. The circle from that intersection between these two. Because the region in the xy plane is going to be circular, we want to do this in cylindrical. Circular region in the xy plane together with a defined upper lower z, cylindrical. So z lives between 2 quantity x squared plus y squared and 2. The intersection between these two is this circle here, and that is what gets projected down into the xy plane. Think of it as like the shadow. If you shine a light high up on the z-axis, what's in green there is the shadow of our region, the projection of our region. It's a circle. So we should be definitely using cylindrical. Therefore, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So z is going to live between 2r squared and 2, 2r squared being the lower z, 2 being the upper z. All right, great. Um, what about this circle where they, they intersect each other? If on the one hand z equals 2 and the other hand z equals 2r squared, we set them equal to each other. And nicely we get our unit circle. That's what gets projected onto the xy plane the unit circle r equals 1. All right, great. Well, you know, you, you, radially, you come radially outward from the origin. Uh, and you have all of theta 0 to 2 pi. So r goes from 0 to 1. And then theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. You're on your way. You have your bounds for your cylindrical triple integral. We're trying to find volume. The interior, the inside of the triple integral is a 1. And then when it comes to the, the ordering or the variables, we do z first. But don't forget, there's an r that comes into play because of r d r d theta from doing the xy plane in polar. There's that Jacobian that we calculated back when we did double integrals in polar. All right, but you're integrating z. Okay, with respect to z, there is no z there. So you just get z. You put a 2 in, you put a 2 minus r in, um, 2 minus r squared. And you get what's there. And now we're going to multiply the r in to get 2r minus 2r cubed. It's all numerical in terms of r. We could just do the r integral and then do the theta integral and multiply. Let's just go ahead and do the inside r integral. We get r squared minus r fourth over 2. Put a 1 in. It's just a half. Integrating 0 to 2 pi, just d theta is just 2 pi. The volume of this three-dimensional shape is just pi units cubed. Okay, let's look at another example. So example six is us doing just a setup, trying to figure out just the setup for our triple integral. It has some generic function on the inside and we're going to do this in cylindrical. We have a cylinder, okay, um, a, a defined upper and lower z for sure. Z is going to live between 0, the xy plane, and the plane 4 minus y. 
R is going to live. Now, this isn't your standard circle that's centered at the origin, where R is a constant. And the other circles we've seen, R is equal to 1. This is not that at all. This is the circle R equals 2 sine theta. It's centered at 1 on the y-axis. And it actually traverses the circle by the time you're to pi. Well, we're going to check that out. We're going to see it. But um, so when we say, uh, for, so we're sure that we want to do this in cylindrical. So right away, there's something strange about the upper bound on Z. It has a name that we can't use in its current format. Z can't be equal to 4 minus Y. There is no Y. Not in cylindrical. So we replace Y with what Y is in polar, which is R sine theta. So Z lives between 0 and 4 minus R sine theta. Project this onto the xy plane. We have that circle r equals 2 sine theta. We come really out from the origin and we spin in the direction of increasing theta. The lower bound on r is 0. The upper bound on r is 2 sine theta. So those are the r bounds. We have our z bounds. We have our r bounds. It is deceptive. I don't want you to think that the circle is 0 to 2 pi. That's deceptive. It's not that at all. Let's just look at a little chart real fast. We'll see. When theta is 0, sine of theta is 0, so you're at 0. And then you grow. When theta is pi over 2, when you're at the positive y-axis, r is equal to 2 because sine of theta is 1. So you're, you're at the point 2 units above the, uh, the x-axis. You're there, and you're halfway down with the circle. You've traversed half of the circle. The other half comes by the time you get to pi. You're back down to 0. Normally, circles go from 0 to 2 pi, but those are the ones that are centered at the origin. Remove the center away from the origin, and your circles get traversed faster. They go from 0 to pi. Okay, so we have our, all of our bounds. That's all the question was really asking. Get the bounds. And when you go to put them in, put them in the right order. Don't forget the R from R, D, R, D, theta. And so that's what you're looking at then as far as the transformation into cylindrical. To find, uh, this, isn't, this isn't the volume of this shape. This is uh, some four-dimensional volume of some function f. Okay. All right, great. So that was two examples of triple integrals in cylindrical. All right, great. The previous, example, the pre previous video was about just introducing triple integrals in cylindrical and all the equations, and we did one example there. So now we are ready to move on to a new coordinate system. We've done triple integrals in Cartesian. We've done triple integrals in cylindrical. Next up, triple integrals in spherical. Perhaps a new coordinate system. It's, it's uh, strange as compared to how these two were really connected. The fact that um, cylindrical was just polar for the xy plane and z. So it was con intimately connected to Cartesian, but spherical is not so much. We'll have to draw the connection for you in the next video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. Um, please comment down below, like, and subscribe, uh, reach out to me if you, if you need, uh, to ask me a question, um, find your way to my webpage. If you're looking for resources, like a, like a solutions manual to midterms, I have a workbook. Um, and also you can find, uh, notes and other resources on that site. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.